these TikTok theories about the Illuminati may have you believing in the existence of that not so secret organization. Just watch. Remember when I explained to you like it's our job? Mm -hmm. Like you know how we bring up and people say like I'm a like devil worshiper or anything. See how instantly uncomfortable everybody in the room became when he said that? But how's the music? Cause it'll be a month. I'd be like, Uzi, get with God. And then I'll drop a song and like, damn. And it's just like, yeah. like, like, why are y'all even bringing up religion? Religion is just like, why are you bringing, like, we don't, like, what they say, don't bring up religion, a woman's age, or yeah, 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 like, yeah. Why are you even bringing, like, like, I don't like. Lil Uzi Vert, the man that put the diamond in the middle of his forehead that symbolized what? The third eye? See, the industry will use people like this to try to keep people as far away from the belief and existence of God as possible. What did he just say? Oh man, why are you bringing religion into it? When they simply ask him to turn to God, to look to God for guidance. But if we get paid to rap about that stuff, they actually pay us more when we rap about more ignorant stuff. So I make sure I even align and come talk on stages like this. But you guys... You heard what he just said. Meek Mill just told you. He says they pay us to rap about stuff like that. They pay us more to rap about ignorant stuff. To keep us dumb. Don't fall for it. Okay, this is either really cool or a little strange, but that's who you're doing business with, right? So. <gasps> what is this? That is Marilyn's hair. Did you hear what the man said? He was like, this might look a little weird, but this is the type of people who you are doing business with. Now, I might be taking that out of context, but that's a piece of Marilyn Monroe's hair. And look how excited Kim is. So. So. You can clone her. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh my God, I'm literally going to do some crazy voodoo shit that I like. <laughs> Wait, what did she just say? How is that the first thought that comes to your mind unless you're a part of the... Kim Kardashian just hugged a bunch of people and said, I'm literally gonna do some crazy voodoo Y'all, it, it, it's right here in plain sight. They don't, they don't even hide it no more. We're gonna hear that again. That's awesome. <laughs> oh my god, I'm literally going to do some crazy voodoo shit that I like to go away. And I channel her. This is so special so to me. You. Thank you so much. This is so cool. So cool. Good vibes. Wow. This is sleeping with me every night. What? What? Yo, Holly weird is weird, man. I swear. <laughs> Some nasty old hair out of somebody's head? And you're that excited about it? Uh-oh. What's about to happen to Kim Kardashian? She's about to do some weird stuff. She just admitted it. <laughs> I've been personally playing for about um, about eight years now. It started it started around when Ill, like around Ill Mind 5 when that came out. Because the song was so big and they told me I had to like kind of sacrifice something. They said, you're going to have to pay it back because you just put this information out there. And it's gonna, this is going to put people in the wrong mindset of what we're trying to do in society. Whoa. The industry told this man, Hobson, if you know his ill mind tracks, his albums and stuff that he'd be putting out. He put it out to wake people up, to get people to think to get people to be closer to God, if anything. And he just said that the industry told him, oh no, you you have altered the minds of people in a direction that we don't want them to go. We already have an agenda. We already have an idea, a mindset that we're trying to scope and create amongst the masses. And you just put this out, now you got a sacrifice. And... Y'all know he didn't hot tail it out of America. He he was he, look, Hobson is more woke than I am. He did this years ago. I'm about to follow him. I'm following him. So they told me that if I don't um if I don't do these list of things, then they're going to hurt my family or hurt 
you know, people that I really care about. And just and, just because he did something positive, which was to get people to wake up, use your brain, don't let them control you. Now he got to pay the price. Um, they called, they told me to go to this office. It was on Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles. <clears throat> and then when I went in, I asked them over the phone, what the, are they going to have me do? They said they couldn't tell me. And then when I went into the office, they sat me down and like, it was like an all white room and they opened one of the doors and it had a Gucci suit. <laughs> a Gucci body suit. <laughs> and I said, oh no, please don't tell me that is what I think it is. They said, yeah, it's exactly what you think it is, pal. And I said, no, please, please no, not the Gucci suit. They said, it's the Gucci suit. This is the only way that you can that you can repay for what you've done. And I said, not the Gucci suit, please. And they said, it's the Gucci suit. They said, we've done, we've ran some facial recognition programs on you and you're gonna need to be this man. And you're gonna need to also contradict whatever you speak about so you can create a balance in this scene of hip hop that you're in because you're the only one who can really pull it off. And I said, oh man, so. Yeah, um, what? came out with this whole thing. Gucci Mane is actually, he's locked up somewhere and he's still fat. <laughs> yo, yo, this man Hobson, he was the skinny Gucci man. They said we did some facial recognition, man, and you the only one that can pull it off. Yo, Oh, why he just do that to me? Because now I'm going to forever see Hobson and Gucci Man and think they look... Oh, my God. <laughs> Yo, I couldn't even finish what I was saying because I just pictured myself putting the two pictures up on the screen just now. Oh, my God. He said Gucci is still locked up. He's still fat. No. So if Hobson ain't in the bodysuit no more... The Gucci double, because Gucci looks so different. He looks night and day different. His hair don't even look like it, it can be his. <laughs> like, how good, how well-groomed this man's hair is compared to the old Gucci man. I, the old Gucci man don't look like he can grow hair as well as the new Gucci man does. You know, <laughs> I might sound stupid right now, but no, like, really hear me out. Like, is this really the same person? Conspiracy theory. Oh, I know my my heavy. So I've been I signed up for TikTok lately. I've been in rabbit hole every night going to sleep. So I can't even tell you if it's Nikola Tesla, uh, how the pyramids was built, the Alaskan ice wall. I'm all over the place, y'all. <laughs> the aliens, the grays. Nighttime for me. I'm on a I'm on a journey at nighttime, fucking with these conspiracies. It's my goat, fun. The GOAT conspiracy theory. Everybody been on my DM the last two months about being on Star Alps, so it's the Illuminati. Oh, yeah, being the Illuminati. The, the promotion. They told me I was an Illuminati, too. But yeah, of course you the Illuminati. Of course. Of course. <laughs> it's like, if you sign with me, <laughs> then of course you're the Illuminati. Because I made it, of course. <laughs> Oh my God! Look, look at the look on his face. He was like, "How could you not be? Cause you with me." But Meek do the same thing I do. I be look every night, TikTok scrolling, looking for conspiracy theories until I fall asleep. Literally. If I was gonna join the Illuminati, I would have. Don't get me wrong, I would have. But I would have did it back then, before I went to prison. To me, it was like, yo, you mean if a nigga get a certain amount of money, you gotta say it was a spiritual being, the devil. Came and gave him the bag. Destroy the child, corrupt them all. Like man, I was so proud the first time I heard it. I was Illuminati. I swear to God, I wanted to drink champagne and roll up some weed, and I finally made it, bitch. I'm above you, stupid. If I knew the Illuminati was gonna pull up to my house and zap niggas, and you walk out to a hundred million. 
Sign me up. I'm all with it. So basically, we just saw Rick Ross admit that that conversation between him and French Montana. Remember when French Montana was on that radio station, Westwood TV or whatever the heck the name of that station was? When French Montana said that he sat down and was speaking to um, Rick Ross and he said if the Illuminati walked in and offered him to be a part of that secret society that he would say that he wanted in, he, he just said it again. So it's true. But did he not already join that society of witchery? But he's so proud of the idea that people already believe that he has joined. Are you part of the Illuminati? Oh, sh <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Is that really the truth? No. <laughs> <laughs> Wiz Khalifa laugh is funny, man. Final question. Oh, he, he, hey, he was telling the truth. He wasn't a part of the Illuminati. Good for him. Good for him. I guess he didn't have enough influence. About a week, not today, but about a week ago, I sold my soul. You understand what I'm saying? And uh, ever since I sold my soul, I haven't been happy ever since. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He said, ever since he sold his soul, he has not been happy. I can imagine. Um, hey, yo, man. Y'all ain't gotta believe me. It is what it is. I, I, like, I'm not even capping. It's because, listen, I had to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, I was trying to make it like you feel me like you know I believe him I believe him I, people like this will do anything to be famous when you see the stuff that him and his brother were doing how hard they were trying how crappy their music was how is it that they still became the success the viral success that they did being such horrible artists if you sell your soul, they can make bad music still flourish. And that's exactly what happened. This is the most serious I've ever seen either one of the brothers talking. Everything else just seemed like they're trolling this. Why else would he say, ever since I sold my soul, I've been unhappy? You would think that he, he, he got the, the life that he wants. He should be happy, right? I don't think he's trolling us here. And as of when I was like selling my soul, um, like there was things that I could sacrifice about and stuff like that, and I sacrificed myself. I could have sacrificed any. He said he sacrificed himself. Didn't know that you could sacrifice yourself. What does that even look like? I could have sacrificed anybody, but, like, but when you sell your soul, you gotta sacrifice someone that you really love, and I sacrificed myself and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I did it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I couldn't do it with nobody that I love. The demon asked me, uh, you, are you sure you want to sacrifice yourself? You can sacrifice someone that you love. I said, nah. But when you say your soul, you feel me? You gotta, you gotta, uh, it's not what how people say it is. You, you really gotta, like, you really gotta pick, you understand what I'm saying? And and and, 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 and you get anything you want. You get to be rich. You get to, you get to be, you get to have fortune. You get to, you get to have everything, everything you ever wanted. You feel me? Here's an artist I haven't seen in a while. Your favorite rapper, you're, you're happier than your favorite rapper right now. You, you have, you watching this stuff, he turned up, he with the, he with the money, you happier than him. That money that he got, the money he got, don't make him happy. None of that. All this, everything, bro. All this real life shit, none of, bro. Y'all niggas don't understand, bro. Like, there's so many people, like, that be telling me they love me. I don't even know these niggas' first names. Like, these rappers are the weirdest I've ever met in my life. Like, Will really tell you that they love you and you don't even know their first name. See, there go another artist confirming what the Island Boy said. These artists, these rappers, 
They might have everything they thought they wanted, but they ain't happy. Back when I was young, and maybe it has changed, but my idea around selling your soul meant that when it was your time to go, your soul went to the devil. No one else didn't go to God, didn't go floating around in purgatory. It went to the devil. But has that narrative changed? Has that idea or thought around selling your soul changed? Is it that now they can also control you as you live? Because that's what it feels like and seems like. Let's watch some more. Fabulous. First of all, tell me about this look, the pressure of the Met Gala. Um, the, the look is Asta de la Renta, so I'm very excited. And, you know, it's all about, you know, being the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. So I'm dressed as the devil. It's all about being the bad guy. She says, I'm the bad guy. Does she give us this look right there? She says she's dressed as the devil. Why can't it be about being the good guy? Why is it that we're praising being the bad guy, the villain, the demon, the devil? Like, tell them how this nigga like sold his soul and shit. This nigga like sold his soul. Not Kai too. Shit, like nigga, you believe the dead deep? Whoa, why he look at him like that? He, it, hey, what's this look? That don't look like a look of what you're talking about. That look like a look of why you telling them. My secret. Whoa. I think you believe the dead D. And not, not, I'm telling you, it's like. I done seen my own man sell his soul for some diamonds and some gold. Man, this shit is getting old, but I'll be lying if I'm saying it's not. Yo, this is like a cypher. And this dude, whoever this guy is, maybe it's one of Kai's friends. He's rapping. He's like, I done seen my friend sell his soul. For some diamonds and some gold. He's spitting. He's spitting. But did y'all see Kai's reaction? Hold on. Let's see that again. For At first, he looked like he's all into it. Like, yeah, he's hyping this boy up. But then when he said that, Kai had this look on his face like, oh, he's talking about me? And look, look, his boy right here. Who was just on the day going the stream saying, yo, this let this man tell you about when he sold his soul. He looked over at Kai like, yeah, he talking about you. Watch, watch his reaction. My own man sell his soul for some diamonds and some gold. Man, this shit is getting old, but I'll be lying if I'm saying it. Look, look, look at him. Look, did you, oh, come on. Come on. Look at his face. Look at his face now the whole time. You looked at Kai before. Now look at his face. I can't remember his dang on name. But look at him. He looks at Kai like, he talking about you, fool. <laughs> watch, watch, watch. And he went from looking at the rapper to looking at Kai with the sly, with the side eye. Look at him. Hold on. I done see my own man sell his soul for some diamonds and some gold. Man, this shit is getting old, but I'll be you lying see, if I'm saying it's not it? <laughs> <laughs> He's still doing it. Oh, no. And even Agent is kind of looking like, oh, they're talking about God. Oh, wow. Are you serious? And he just had Nicki Minaj on his live stream. I'm like, what is Nicki Minaj doing at, on, Kai, on Kai's live stream? Man, we just heard Nikki. Just heard what Nikki said. It's all about being the bad guy. See, I'm over here thinking that times are still the same to a certain degree that they only come after celebrities like actors and, and people that do music. But no, they come after the content creators too. I guess they come after whoever they feel has a significant amount of influence, which Kai does. He's the biggest Twitch streamer in the world. I'm over here thinking that I'm safe. Yeah, I'm famous, not because I wanted to be. That was just a byproduct of the work that I put out over the years. I'm over here thinking, that, hey, I'm safe. They're not even going to bother me. And hopefully that's still true. But no, look, they're coming after the content creators as well. Speaking of content creators, let's hear what this OF content creator got to say. I promise y'all the Illuminati hit me up and they was like, yo, what's up? And I was like, pass. They was like, we got you. I was like, pass. That's like something that a lot of people probably would jump at. And I don't, I don't know how deep that stuff go, but. How was that asked? 
How um, is that opportunity presented? You want to be down with this secret society? You want to be down with us? Basically, it was like, they mean business. They were like, they, want, they wanted me. <laughs> they seen something, I don't know. But Like a person approaches you about this? Yeah. It's not something sent in a DM type of thing? Mm -mm. Nah. Are there repercussions for turning it down? I don't think so. Nah. Um, I just, I'm a positive person. I, I attract positive things to me, so. And uh, you chose not to join because? I don't, um. You passed I don't want to be a part of something that I don't understand. She don't want to be a part of something that she doesn't understand. Smart. Smart, because a lot of folks get into that mess not understanding what they signing up for. Next thing they know, they ain't happy. You're 16. Where does your inspiration come from? Um, believe it or not, being 16, I've been through a lot, so... Come on, how much heartbreak can you have at 16? We were hooking up, but I said, hey, this is not going any farther. I'm a virgin, and I don't want to lose it this way. And that didn't matter to them. They did it anyways. And I internalized it, and I told myself it was my fault because I still went in the room with him. I still hooked up with him. Here is the thing, I was a part of that Disney crowd that publicly said they were waiting till marriage. I didn't have the romantic, like, first time with anybody. That was not it for me, and that sucked. And then I had to see this person all the time. Woo, I don't know what person she's talking about, but we know about Disney and what they be up to. They be up to some craziness. A little blurb update today on Epstein. It was showing a photo of him at Disney. He's sitting down at the table. Piglet's behind him. It's him and another guy sitting down, and this guy's holding this girl, like, by her <laughs> arms like this. That same girl is in another photo with Epstein. They're on the plane. She's, like, laying, she's sleeping. She's laying down, and he's holding her like this. Then, come to find out, Disney sent kids to his island for snorkeling trips for, huh. like, nine years. Snorkeling. And, and their cruise sense. their cruise ships uh, made stops at his island all the time. Dude. What? That was an update that I was never expecting to hear. That the Disney cruise ships would stop at Epstein Island? Disney would send kids to Epstein's Island to go snorkel for nine years? They, someone at Disney had to know what this man was up to on that island had to know that was not a safe space for those kids to be we heard what this man did when it came to teenage girls was he also involved with i don't even you know what i'm not gonna say that i don't even want to think about that Train people to be ignorant with style. They give you the equipment that you need to be a functional ignoramus. American schools do not equip you to deal with things like logic. They don't give you the criteria by which to judge between good and bad in any medium or format. Preach. And they prepare you to be a usable victim for a military industrial complex that needs manpower. As long as you're just smart enough to do a job and just dumb enough to swallow what they feed you, you're going to be all right. Ooh! Ooh -hoo -hoo, this man is spitting! He said, as long as you're just smart enough to do a job and just ignorant enough, dumb enough to eat what they feed you, you're going to be all right. That's why so many people feel miserable. Because, yeah, truth be told, they are going to just be all right. <laughs> they can live their lives doing exactly what the system has orchestrated for them to do. But they won't be truly happy. You can't control people if people are happy. But you can control an ignorant mind. You can control someone who needs guidance. It's outlined in that book that I was telling you guys about, Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. Link down in the description box below. Or you can listen to the audio version, which I recommend right here on YouTube. Just look it up, Outwitting the Devil. It's so fascinating to hear this conversation between the narrator and the voice that's playing the devil himself. You're going to be all right. But if you go beyond that, you're going to have these grave doubts that give you stomach problems, headaches, make you want to go out and do something else. So I believe that schools mechanically and very specifically try and breed out any hint 
of creative thought in the kids that are coming up. Wow, he just this looks old. This clip looked like it's from the 70s or something. And for this man to be spewing this amount of information and knowledge, it has me thinking. I have so many friends that want to get out of the rat race of working the nine to five job, working for the man. I got so many friends that want to do that. And me, myself, I have so many different skill sets that I have been successful at, which I have also shown repeatedly over time that they will come to me in hopes that I can give them or provide them some sort of guidance in whatever other niche or field that they want to try to embark on. And what do I keep seeing over and over and over again from almost every single one of them that the programming that he just spoke of got them so trapped that they cannot get out of it. No matter how easily I place the blueprint right in front of their face, all that they have to do is copy and paste and they still won't do anything about it. My name is Montague William III, and what I will tell you may well sound absurd, but the less who believe it, the better for me. For you see, I'm in banking and big industry. For many a year, we have controlled your lives while you all just struggle and suffer in strife. We created the things that you don't really need, your, your sports cars and fashions and plasma TVs. I remember it clearly how all this began. Family secrets from father to son. Inherited knowledge that gives me the edge while you peasant people lie sleeping at night in your beds. We control the money that controls your lives whilst you worship false idols and wouldn't think twice about selling your souls for a place in the sun. These things that won't matter when your time is done. But as long as they're there to control the masses, I just sit back and consider my assets. This is my friend Kyle, and he's about to get initiated by the Freemasons after we snuck into their lodge. <laughs> At this point, we realized it was too late to go back as we were being led to our seats. This man, what did he just say? Did he just say, give me the secrets of the Master Mason or I will take your life? Like, this ain't nothing to play with. Like, this boy said that they snuck in here? I don't think you snuck in here. I think you are actually went through the process of becoming a Mason. Because if you're playing around with these folks, they will they will not play back with you. At this point, they throw Kyle into a bag and start shuffling him around like he's a pinata. What's the point? stopping here is we're going to be sneaking into a Masonic party and we're going to be live streaming everything on Twitch again. So make sure to follow me on Twitch to stay tuned for when that goes live. What in the world? I'm not going to lie. I want to see that when that happens. Look, they go to the link right there. You can go follow this man too. And um, yeah, let's, let's watch that. I literally just got finished watching this movie right before filming this. So spoiler alert, might not want to watch this part. Let's talk about this movie, Leave the World Behind. I mean, the title says enough, Leave the World Behind. Now, the first thing I noticed when I started watching this movie was how they kept showing the Rockstar logo. You feel me? We all know it's a new GTA coming out. All this stuff is symbolic. Pay attention to the beat headphones he got on. You feel me? They showing us how they described us through this music, through the game. The driveway of the house they pulled into. And it got to be some of these beats in this music because tell me that this is not a beat right there. Y'all see that? And tell me there's not an AirPod with his yellow arrow at. Something about them beats. I don't know what it is. Which makes me wonder about this scene right here. 
Always remember to watch out for the checkerboard. It's always gonna be somewhere in the mix. I've been warning y'all about the blackout. I'm telling y'all they put this stuff in movies. Y'all better pay attention. They show how the scrap that our kids be. You feel me? They'll never see the seriousness in real situations. Oh, man. I'm so glad I watched this movie. Yeah, he, he, what he said right now, he says, they're showing how distracted our kids be. They'll never see the seriousness in real situations. You feel me? All this going on and what she worry about watching that show. I coincidental knowing what this movie about she got on the NASA shirt. I'm telling you, all this stuff is symbolic. I remember when the radio had went in and out and it was talking about how the cyber attack was messing up the animal migration pattern. I remember when all the animals was acting weird, walking in circles and ain't nobody know what was going on. That's the same thing. That's what was happening with these deer in the movie. Crazy how these movies be reflecting real life, huh? Y'all remember what they said this meant on that paper? Death to America. Now this dude say that Korea is behind all this, which is ironic because wasn't we just into it with North Korea? And we know this man knew what he was talking about in the movie because he was the only one that really had supplies at the end. Off all communication, off all transportation. Quite right here though. This part right here was so surreal. This part right here gave me the chills. And it became too dependent of technology. You feel me? This new technology and stuff. Remember what he said? The truth is more scarier. And they literally told us everything in this movie. The whole time, these people looking for help. You feel me? They looking for a safe place. I'm like the daughter end up finding the rich people bunker. It keeps showing us how to scrap to the kids be. Instead of her going to get her family and letting them know that she found the bunker, she decided to sit there and catch up on her show. What really get me is these two help produce this movie. How I run it. Already been talking about That's correct. The Obamas? Come on now. If they're telling us something. They're telling us something. I'm telling y'all, if you haven't watched the movie, go watch the movie. This this I feel like this movie could have easily outlined what could be the inevitable for us. The reset is one that they can do not only here in America, but across the globe. So this really made me think like have we already been left behind or something? I mean, he did say no one is in control. No one is pulling the screens. This definitely makes me want to watch this movie again after sharing this with you all. Spoiler alert. Sorry. Not sorry. This is where it gets really freaky. I got goosebumps. I'm scared, bro. From Albert Einstein says, I'm not sure which weapons the Third World War will be fought, but the Fourth World War, they will fight with sticks and stones. Day one of AI taking over. It was contained to its own server. The AI figured out with like a Roomba vacuum, that's the only thing it could figure out how to connect to. So it put all of its information onto the Roomba computer. And then that allowed it to connect to the Wi-Fi, which allowed it to connect to everyone's phones. And then it spread instantly. It was in control of 3D printers to build itself with no one knowing until the one time 40 days into it decided yep I don't want humans anymore dude it like went into this whole thing to where shut down the power plants it messed with Wall Street like just chaos developed its own killing drones oh. to survey all of earth like if a human was found it would kill it and he's like obviously the story is made up yeah he said the story was made up by AI when I asked it to make up a story of how it would take over it's just a hypothetical <laughs> <laughs> what? See, nah, man. This is what I'll talk about, man. This AI technology is already planning. It's already planning what it's gonna do. Hey, hold on. See, look, AI is already happening right behind me. Cause why them lights go out? Let me turn them lights back on. Why them lights go out? It's AI, y'all. It's AI. <laughs> The internet will be out for weeks if this solar storm hits Earth, and they calculated the odds that it will. The last time we had one this big was in 1859, known as the Carrington event, and it caused some shit that humanity has never seen before. And if that ever happens again in the 21st century, it would be a hundred times worse. These solar storms are basically just supercharged EMP devices, electromagnetic pulse, meaning they destroy electronics and wireless communication. But we didn't have much electronic and radio wave technology back in 1859, so most people were in the clear. Nowadays, well, pretty much our entire lives were 
revolve around electricity. Just try to imagine all power in your home, cell phone towers, internet, credit card systems, out for weeks or even months on end, but how likely is it? These phenomena are also known as CMEs, coronal mass ejections, which is just the sun violently spitting out plasma from its surface from all the buildup of energy it produces. This deadly plasma travels through space and can sometimes end up hitting Earth, coming in many different levels. First, we got solar wind, which is just the everyday radiation our sun produces at all times, which is mainly deflected by Earth's ionosphere. A few stray remnants of this plasma that make it pass through magnetic field get sent to the openings in the north and south poles where they create aurora borealis, the northern lights. If we crank it up just enough, Notch, we get solar storms, the first stage of a CME with a much more powerful effect on our planet, but not nearly as bad as what we got coming. If the magnetic field of the stage one plasma ejection is aligned just right when it hits us, it merges with Earth's magnetic field and stretches our atmosphere out from its force of energy, eventually reaching a tipping point where it snaps back and hits our planet like a rubber band. This creates a geomagnetic storm, which does absolutely nothing to organic matter like you and me, and is how life on Earth has been able to survive thousands of these storms throughout the ages. But for all wires on Earth carrying electricity, generators, and even wireless communication signals, it's a complete meltdown. The energy produced by this storm can completely shut down our power grids or even cause them to overload and blow up. And this actually happened in 1989 when it caused complete power grid failures in places like Quebec. These we can deal with. But then we crank it up again. Solar hurricanes, which are just CMEs at a much higher category level. The last one that hit us was in 1859 and it actually had some pretty devastating effects on the little bit of technology that we had back then. Called the Carrington Event, it lit up the sky so much at 1am that people thought the sun was rising and it produced aurora borealis as far south as Colombia. As for technology- Whoa! Okay. Okay. Hold on. This is real. This is real. Wait, can they predict when this thing could happen again? Because if so, well, it sounds like he might have had some sort of prediction uh, according to past events as when it could happen again in the near future, if it is the near future. But is it going to be that or is it going to be what we saw before where they control the power grids and everything shutting down? Shit, don't do this to us on purpose. If this thing might do it to us again. Telegraph machines, you know, those things that go boop, 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 doo, 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 boop, boop. It's Columbia. As for technology, telegraph machines, you know, those things that go boop, 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 doo, 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 boop, 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 for communications just burnt out and fully fried all around the world. Shocking users that tried to use them, causing sparks to fly out of them and even fires in telegraph lines. But this was pretty much all we had back then on a mass scale for electronic technology. So just imagine that, but spread into pretty much everything you use every single day. Electric power grids, cell phone towers, air traffic control, internet lines, credit card networks, servers, everything would go offline. But that shouldn't be a problem, right? Can't we just boot everything back up once the storm passes? Not quite. The strength of these geomagnetic waves and solar hurricanes does more than just cause a blackout. They quite literally completely fry anything that has electricity running through it and renders it unusable. A solar hurricane of this scale in this day and age is estimated to cause upwards of $2.6 trillion of damage in the US alone, with an estimated 4 to 10 years just to replace all the damaged systems all around the world and a few months or weeks at best to get the basic necessities back up and we actually did have a Carrington event sized solar hurricane heading straight towards earth back in 2012 if anyone remembers that it just barely missed us by nine days which might seem like a lot but it's just a hair away on the planetary scale the next one is inevitable as solar hurricanes like these are just bound to happen every couple hundred years due to sheer probability they've happened all throughout history with events reported in 774 AD 1052 1279 1580 to among others but we didn't have any electronic technology all those times so all it did was light up the sky the next one will be the first one we experience in the age of electronic technology and there's no telling what's going to happen on average the probability of a serious solar storm hitting us on any given year is about four percent with a 0.7 percent chance of a carrington event level solar hurricane from happening i mean it's not zero percent but that's not so bad right mm, well every 11 years the sun enters a period of peak activity called the solar maximum during this time the odds rise to 20 8% for a severe storm and 4% for a Carrington super hurricane. And That's the next crazy. time our sun enters the solar maximum, 2025 so get ready for that johnny boy if we extrapolate that data over a longer period of time we see that there's a 50 percent chance that the big one will hit us by 2070 would you be ready to go months without internet i don't think anyone is she by 2070 i will it's because who's to say i'm even be here i'm psh, think i'm gonna care about some internet in the year 2070 
right, this is breaking this hour. Terror threats against the United States reach an all-time high. I've never seen a time where so many of the threats are all elevated, all at exactly the same time. He is not prone to dramatic talk, in fact, the opposite. So if he is underscoring something, it is a real threat. A heightened level like we have never seen. Breaking news coming out in the past 24 hours as FBI Director Ray warns of an unprecedented terrorist threat to the United States sees blinking red lights everywhere and he's also urging the u.s to take precaution for faith-based communities amid anti-semitism and islamophobia and i'll be sharing with you the latest video footage and articles coming out on this as the fbi director says terror threats elevated to an all-time high since october 7th blinking red lights everywhere and they're also saying that, that the fbi director ray is not somebody that typically issues these threats vocalizing this and very directly is very concerning that we need to be on the watch with these threats that are being articulated by the fbi and this comes as we had heard that they believe there are sleeper cells that are already here i'm going to share with you some clips as they're saying they're coming across the border they're already here and we need to be on the lookout Connect, i was connected with with the, everybody that's doing it I don't even really want to speak on that because like, he probably get a little nervous when I'm talking about the people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I keep dropping my money. I get nervous when I talk about it because my life be on the line, but I don't be giving for I was protected with the Illuminati. Oh, my God. The Illuminati? Oh, yes, I swear to God, my mom. So the Illuminati is real? Yes, it's real. <laughs> what you mean you used to be connected? I don't think you could leave the Illuminati. Listen, I'm the first person to leave. I made the ultimate sacrifice. Oh. I made the ultimate sacrifice and I got the Illuminati. So I'm the first person that could speak about it. Yeah, I sacrificed my son. Your son? Yeah, I swear to God, my mama. He's looking at me, he, he can't speak on that. <laughs> he, he, he laughing, but he really know what's going on. He, if he, if he, he don't want to speak on that. I'm, I'm keeping it real. So that's how I got out. So I'm half Illuminati and half street. <laughs> yeah. Wait. I swear to God, I'm, I'm, half, I'm half Illuminati Dead and half street. Dead ass. Dead ass. No. I have no idea who this man is. Is he a, a rapper or somebody? He got the grill in his mouth, the trap chain, holding the water cash. He talking about he sacrificed his son. He was part of the Illuminati. If, if he would have just been talking about he was part of the Illuminati without mentioning a sacrifice, I may not have believed him. But the fact that he brought up, yeah, I, I paid with the ultimate sacrifice. My son is always somebody close to you. The closer the individual is to you, the more likely of a chance that you will have being accepted into the Illuminati. Showing you clips of celebs talking about the Illuminati until your thick skull accept the fact that it's true. Oh. In Hollywood, if you're in the industry, the devil, like Illuminati, all that they try to get you. Big influence, you around it. They be try, they try to get anybody, but you just gotta be smart. And you and Cali, you gonna get sucked in. They invite you to these parties, these house parties. They they be like, oh, whoop the whoop gonna be there, like. Your favorite rapper, the big ass person. Get in, you gotta give us your phones and all this shit. And then they might do some gay shit to somebody and then try to like and record it and tell them, oh, if if you if you expose us, we gonna post it everywhere. And I know that from word of ear, shit in these in these house parties. Let me tell you an experience I went through personally. And it was this big influencer party. I say a name. It was Bella throwing party. So then, oh, 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 oh. she wanted to tell the name of who it was too. Invited from. Yo, she asked. She was like, "Is it safe for me to say the name?" She was dead serious. When she looked over here, look, look at this face. This is not a face of somebody that's telling a fake story. When she asked that question, can I say the name? Because if this was a fake story, why should, would she even have a name in mind unless she's that messed up of an individual that would just throw a random person name under the bus? She dead serious. It was Bella throwing party. So I invited from some other friends. It was on Halloween. I already don't celebrate Halloween. Hey, that's my birthday. That's messed up. That's the devil's day. No, it ain't. I happened to be with them and they was going. I was like... Okay, let's go. I'm a son of God, not a son of a devil. Just because I was born on the devil's day. We don't celebrate Halloween. That's the devil's day. I had been to be with them and they was going. I was like, fuck, let's go. The party said you have to be half naked. Second of all, like, the same night on Hollywood Boulevard, the party was on Hollywood Boulevard. Some guy got shot and killed on Hollywood Boulevard, so the whole street was shut down. So that was another sign. We get up there. They didn't bring your phone in. I ain't bringing their phone in. I'm bringing my now. You gotta sign some papers. What am I signing some shit to get into a party? Like what? And then this is where it really threw me off. 
They said they had to prick your blood to get in. No, I'm good. Everyone else went, I called my Uber and left. Like, that's the shit where I think they be trying to get you. People move to L.A. for a dream. They chasing money, fame, clout, whatever. So they got to think about it, somebody. So Look, I believe her. I believe the story that she's telling. And the fact that she was smart enough, wise enough, even though she don't look like either one of those things, but she got the heck up out of there. Good for her. You know what's crazy too? If you type in Illuminati backwards on Google search, yeah. you know what it comes up? What? So it's the, it sends you straight to the National Security Agency site. National Security, yeah. Agency. What was that? The National Security Agency site, man. The Ooh. government. Wait, if you type it in? If you what type do you mean? In, if you spell Illuminati backwards yeah. into Google, then the first link of what they'll send you is the national security. Is that true? Yes. You can I, type it in. I type it in Google right now. Yes. Yeah. Let's try this shit. Yeah. Yeah, let's try it. All right. Illuminati backwards is I-T-A-N- I M U L L I. What's the first thing that pop up, y'all? National Security Agency. Is Illuminati's real? Illuminati's real. Look, I never not believed it was. I type it in Google right now. Yes. Yeah. Let's try this shit. Yeah. There's no way. Mm -hmm. How do you spell Illuminati backwards? Though? I T A. I T A. N I M. N I M U L L I U L L I Mink. Oh shit. Mink. <laughs> what the fuck? Mink. <laughs> what the fuck? Why is that? Why does it do that? Oh no. Why do you think? Stupid. <laughs> National Security Agency sent. This is actually true. Conspiracy. Don't know what the Illuminati is. Is he Republican or you're Democrat? You're wrong. Right. Why? It's this easy. It's called divide and conquer. That's why there's two parties and only two. And they're controlled by the same people at the very top who belong to the Council of Foreign Relations, the Bilderberger Group. They also belong to the Trilateral Commission. And you people don't even know what the hell that is. But if you did know, you would know that these are the people that control your world by making global policies that you never vote on and by which parties both serve and belong to these organizations and control your world. Now, here's how it works. Bro, this man might look crazy, but he ain't sounding crazy. <laughs> he, 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 he sounded like he know what he's talking about. For one, he talks better than I do. He looked like he's strung out on drugs, homeless, out here tripping, yapping about a bunch of nothing. But no, he ain't yapping about nothing. He talking about something. And he looked like he know exactly what he's talking about, too. He looked like an intelligent hobo. <laughs> Here's how it works. Really easy. Divide and conquer can only work if the people that are divided are not aware of the falsely created division. If you're not aware... He said, the people that are divided, it works if they're not aware of the falsely created division. Oh, snap. This man is preaching. Falsely created division. If you're not aware of it, then it works. If you know about it, then it don't work no more. If you have socialism without capitalism, it becomes communism. If you have capitalism without socialism, it becomes fascism. And it's just that easy. I love you. That's all you need to know. That's why Masonic symbols are all over your freaking money. But you don't pay any attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. Welcome to the channel where we pay attention. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, make sure you do so. Let's proceed. You know what I call an Instagram, right? Yeah. Because most people think it's like an instant telegram because it's about sending messages and information. Mm -hmm. But it's really an instant gram of dope. So Instagram is actually dopamine. It's electronic dopamine, virtual dopamine. So, you know, that's why it's getting pushed so heavy because women want attention. Attention has to deal with dopamine release. Mm -hmm. Dopamine is known as the reward hormone. And we call it the reward hormone, not because it rewards you, but really that it motivates you. Because the only reason why any reward has any value is because you worked hard for something. If you get called up on stage 
to get an award or a certificate or anything of the like, and you ain't did nothing for it, but everybody thinks you did, you're gonna feel like hollow man. Social media, just another tactic used to control us, manipulate us, and keep giving us that hint of dopamine so that we can stay under their control. Even the people that put these things into place know it to be true. There was a documentary on Netflix about social media. I can't remember exactly what it was called, but the people that created the social media apps, they were saying, yo, we know exactly what we're doing to people. We know how we're controlling them. We know how we're manipulating them into thinking a certain type of way. We know how to keep them on these devices that are in front of them, make them enslaved to those devices by continuously giving them that hit of dopamine. But it's when those individuals, the ones that create the apps for us, when they start to act different and move different, then that's when we know things are about to hit the fan. Why is no one questioning why Mark Zuckerberg is building a huge underground bunker in Hawaii right now? He's building a $100 million Hawaii compound right now with an underground bunker that will contain food and energy resources. His complex is called Kalua Ranch, and it is shaping up to be one of the most expensive personal projects in modern history. The compound will consist of a dozen buildings with two central mansions that will be connected to a tunnel that will lead to a 5,000 square foot underground bunker. The shelter will contain an escape hatch, a living spaces, mechanical room, and feature blast resistant concrete along with steel doors. Uh, is there something coming that we should be aware about? What did I just say? Prime example, the creator of Facebook acting different, moving different, about to build this $100 million compound in Hawaii where he can still be connected to the states, but off on an island where if something does happen, a nuclear bomb comes and hit the United States and take out the whole country, he might feel the effects via a wave or two in Hawaii not trying to scare any of y'all but you never know i wonder if he got any space in those two um mansions that he's about to build because he should right he should it's the mansions they should they have a lot of rooms i'm, I'm gonna hit him up um see if he can i need to get verified first he's probably gonna ignore my dm watch this youtuber explain the story about the illuminati point of the story is she really wanted to be famous i guess that's, mm -hmm. that's a yeah that's what she wanted to be. and she met somebody um who could promise her that and she met somebody have you ever heard this no she met somebody this is crazy and he was like i know how to make you famous and she's like how and he's like we can turn you into anything like, scientology we can turn you illuminati honestly it, it may have been may something have been. like that we can turn you into a singer an actor whatever you want and one day he visited her, her apartment and he was like in a suit and tie and i came in and i saw him in the suit and then she's like please leave and she and she closed the door on me so i left and she came up to my apartment sobbing and she was like this guy please you cannot repeat this and for, for three years i held the story to myself because i thought this guy was gonna f me but they were like if you ever repeat this they'll kill me and they'll f you and they'll anybody that you love and she was sobbing to me and she's like this guy he came to me and he's like he's telling me she, she was like this guy came to me and he's like i can turn you into anything you want to be but you have to sacrifice somebody and i just spoke to my mother and my mom my mom really supports me and she's like willing to be sacrificed so i can become like famous. a singer or whatever famous whatever and it was just completely serious and it was really terrifying really really terrifying like you believed her totally believed yeah. her wow that's crazy. One of his friends had an incident like that. That what? That story sounds almost too believable. Where this girl talked to her mother and her mother was willing to sacrifice herself for her daughter's fame. Wow. Listen to what Ariana Grande has to say about the devil. About and another. this one was just like, it wasn't. It was just like a story that we made up and we're going with. And like, yeah, Tommy was like, what about I've seen the devil? And I was like, oh, yeah, that's fun. Let's tell that story. And then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that seems fun. Yeah, I love that my Tommy was like, what about the devil? I was like, fun. You know, like, what? No, sorry. Oh, God, the conspiracies that are going to come from that clip. Anyway. <laughs> 
you will be, you will you will be another member of the Illuminati. Yeah, That's yeah. my favorite thing. I love that thing too. Everyone always thinks we're part Illuminati. And somebody was like, yeah, they're witches. I'm like, if I'm a witch, I have the least amount of power in the world. Hey. <laughs> no, um, yeah. Because that is like such a thing. Like, I have like friends whose moms are it's like, a thing. is it true? And I'm like, what? I had a family like, member ask Yeah, actually it is. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. She said, yeah, it, it is true. Which one is it, Ariana Grande? Is it not true or is it true? Yeah, it is. You said that music, like, in terms of getting paid, it's like the biggest thing in only all your art. Yeah, because of that it's, 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 it's a... I'm gonna have to reiterate what NBA Youngboy is saying, even though there's text on the screen. The text is small and it's hard to make out what he says. The demonic industry. He said, You gotta learn it's a demonic industry. That I chose to be a part of. That he chose to be a part of. So, like, I, I accept it, I run with it. He says, He accepted, he, he runs with it. But don't be a a, a dummy at the same time. He said, but don't be a dummy at the same time. You gotta understand they're using me as entertainment. He says, you gotta understand they're using me as entertainment. And it should become self-destruction too. And it becomes self-destruction. Because I ain't no entertainer. Because he, because he isn't an entertainer. He just told you, NBA Youngboy just told you that this industry is demonic. He's keeping it a hundred with you. Everyone looks at NBA Youngboy as being like this bad guy, but yet he was like the most popular artist on YouTube for a while. Anytime he dropped a song, a music video, it would go viral. It would be the number one rap song on YouTube. Now it's happening for a minute. And then you're talking about at the time, a 19 year old boy who had four kids by four different women. Why is it that they're pushing that narrative out there to the public? Why is it that someone like this, who is doing the things that he is doing so popular? Is it because they want to tear us down? Specifically, I'm talking about the black community. They want us to look bad? So they're using him as a puppet? Saying, oh, whatever you do since we've made you so famous, whatever you do, they're going to mimic, they're going to copy, they're going to think it's okay. Even if they know in their right mind that it isn't, they're still going to act that way if they're listening to you enough. Because the information that you're spitting in your lyrics is burning in their subconscious mind. And their subconscious mind is what dictates their actions and controls them. This man broke into a Bohemian Grove and this is what he captured. This chilling video comes from Dancer One on YouTube, and he wanted to capture a glimpse of Moloch the Owl God and Bohemian Shrove, which come to find out is a band search term on TikTok. This is That's where elites of the Bohemian Grove is a band search term on TikTok. What? Meaning since 1800, we're team. talking anyone from Ronald Reagan to Clint Eastwood, and it comes All with the wild elites. conspiracies like picking the next president to ritualistic unaliving. He even managed to capture this creepy clip in one of the unlocked rooms. But the footage I'm about to show, to my knowledge, has never been seen. It's an up-close glimpse of the Owl God. Also, I asked him, what was the creepiest thing that happened? He said, I heard owl noises the whole night, but they sounded like a human imitating an owl. How I recommend watching the whole thing on his channel. But That's what do you amazing. think about this conspiracy? What the heck yeah. is that? It's an owl statue. What the f***? It's a statue they, they worship. No way. Yeah, it is kind of cool. Oh, it's hollow. Cool. What the freak? A bunch of ferns have grown on it. Why would they put that there? Yo, it's wood. Oh, no way. You can go like behind the owl. I got some owls. That's crazy. Who knows what happened to this guy after he For there. real? Y'all, this is the Bohemian Grove. This is pretty much the Illuminati headquarters. To leave this place now. He said this is pretty much the Illuminati headquarters. So he went and snuck in to this place where, like, former presidents go. There's yeah. a photograph of, it's uh, Ronald Reagan with Herbert Walker Bush and a couple other people all standing around. 
And it's like, these are the people that used to hang out at this place and they would put on robes and they would worship an owl god, an owl god and they would burn an effigy. And they're playing, and, and Alex snuck in and made video footage of this shit. And then no one's denying that it's real. That's this crazy. really did happen. So, so they're in with these bankers and former presidents and they're dressed like druids. Yes. And, the, and some guy brings over something that it's an effigy that's supposed to be a body, a wrapped up effigy. It's also a bunch of sticks in, bl in a blanket, but it's like shaped like a body. Yeah. And then they drop it on the fire and they're all worshiping an owl god. Wow. Nobody's denying it because how could they? They couldn't come up with an excuse fast enough in order to deny it. Terrifying facts from Stanley Kubrick's unfinished masterpiece, Eyes Wide Shut, 1999. Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman signed open-ended contracts. They agreed to work on this project until Stanley Kubrick released them from it, however long that turned out to be. I didn't know that. It took so long that while living in the UK, their two children acquired English accents. What? I didn't know that either. But what happened to the director of this movie is what made me want to watch this movie in the first place because the story is crazy. The film holds the record of the longest continuous film shoot with astonishing 400 days. This scene where Tom Cruise walks through a door, Kubrick settled for only 95 takes. The famous 95 takes of him just walking through a door and looking at his watch? I would have been pissed <laughs> if I was Tom Cruise. You made me do that 95 times, really? The famous party scene was shot in a mansion belonging to the ultra-rich banking family, the Rothschilds godless sex-fueled party that were held in secret for the elite these are that was a mansion the rothschild's mansion looked like this this is crazy if he's exposing what happens with the elites that looks scary by the way how is it that an elite like the rothschild family would allow him to then go and make a movie exposing what they do in their own home Childs, godless sex-fueled party that were held in secret for the elite. These are real leaked photos from a 1972 Ulta secret gathering hosted by a Rothschild. Look at that. They all used masks most like in the film. Kubrick died only four days after showing the final cut to Warner Brothers. Only four days after submitting the final cut to Warner Brothers, he died. It just goes to show you they were upset at the fact that he even had the idea to expose what it is that they've been up to. Don't mess with them. Studio went and sabotaged it by removing approximately 20 shots. The cutscenes remain a mystery. Wow. They removed 20 shots from that film. I'm surprised they even let the film hit theaters. The movie hit theaters after the man passed away that created the film in the first place. Ain't that something? He didn't even get to see his masterpiece up on the big screen. I wonder if he didn't die, how much of those scenes would have still made it into the movie? It's, it's amazing to think in order for us to even have seen this film, the, the masterpiece that it was, he had to sacrifice his life for it. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Leave your thoughts, comments, and opinions down below. And I'm going to catch y'all in the next one. See ya.